bag, such as well logo. As you may guess, I, Group Pickles, am back to talk about more closing and opening logos, as well as bumpers. I've also decided to add some swell logos from video games as well. Many of these logos would make very swell dildos. One that would make great dildos is the Stephen J. Cannell Productions logo, shown here in its 1982 incarnation. Egg, this logo is very swell. Scoot69 has absolutely no history with this logo, but when he saw it for the first time when making this video, he found the music in it to be oddly beautiful. Weird, I know, but it's just the way he feels. Up next is a logo that creeped Scoot69 out around age 7 or 8 or so. Scoot69 remembers seeing this logo at the beginning of his copy of Tony Talks Underground for the PlayStation 2. Here it is. From 2003, it's the Neversoft Company logo. How much more weird and creepy of a logo can you get? Scoot69 was fascinated by this logo as a kid, being so out of place in his mind for a skateboarding game. Imagine seeing this for the first time as a kid late at night, it would be pretty unsettling. We now focus back on DD, with a logo some of you might recognize. I bet just about all of you have seen this logo at some point in your life, the 1999 variant of the AKA cartoon logo that came on at the end of Ed, Edit and Eddie. Scoot69 has always been confused as to what the figure in the logo is supposed to be. The best guess he has is it's some disembodied head with arms and legs being impaled in a pencil. I bet you also know about the various different versions that they made for the special episodes and the big picture show, from the bloody one for Ed, Edit and Eddie's Blue Ha Ha to the watermelon one for the big picture show. Back on to logo Scoot69 has no history with, we have the 1997 Bravo logo. To be completely honest Scoot69 isn't able to find much info in this logo. All he can really say is he likes the music in the logo. Next up is another logo related to video games. Most of you are probably familiar with the Valve software logo used in games produced by Valve, but by far the creepiest one is the one used in Valve's more recent games from 2011 to 2012. In the surface this logo looks like Valve's other one, all until the guy in the logo, who still remains unidentified to this day, starts to move his head. To be honest it kind of gave Scoot69 a slight surprise when he first saw it. As you can see, it's the Neon Mickey Mouse logo from 1978. Hello. Scoot69 saw this logo used by Mr. Creepypasta as the image for his narration of the River Country film, which is actually a really good story. Most people find this logo scary, but I don't find it scary. Hey Drew, since Scoot69 is feeling like adding in a guest Barney Bunch member for this video, he felt like including me for this video. For my fist logo of the video, here is the Mutant Enemy logo. Mutant Enemy was a relatively small company founded in 1996 by John Wendon to produce Buffy the Vampire Slayer, as well as its spin-off, Angel, and two short-lived science fiction series, Firefly and Dollhouse. As of now, the company is currently producing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hey guys, since it is absolutely required for me to appear at least once in these logo videos, I brought you guys a logo, and it's really fucking weird and slightly terrifying. <laughs>
Stu, that was the weirdest fucking logo I have ever fucking seen. Goddamn, I needed to fucking bleach my goddamn eyes out with Ronald McDonald's golden piss after this. What the shit? Did I just see some clown go behind some blinds and put on women's underwear in front of a small child? What the fuck were the creators of this logo smoking when they thought this up because I want some? Well, Melvin, that logo may have been weird, has shit, but we still have more logos to cover. Here we have the Sinister Cinema logo from the early 80s to early 90s. To be completely honest, Scoot69 actually kind of likes the way this logo looks. He always did kind of prefer cheeto looking things over flashy looking things, but that's just him. This is a pretty rare logo that can usually be found in VHS tapes of obscure horror movies. Now, to conclude this video, I will not be showing a logo, but rather a bumper, as Tom Servo 3 has established that bumpers can be used as well. I'm going to be playing a bumper that both me and Melvin get spiny and anal tingling chills from. Oh god, I know which one you're going to put up. Yep, that one. Here it goes. Straight from the big man itself, it's the Dawn is your enemy, the runner-up for scariest sign-off adult swim ever used, and contender for scariest bumper of all time. What can be said about this thing, the resonating metal sounds, the sound of metal scraping against metal, and the faces of the sun and moon, it's all fucking scary. There's even a creepypasta about this bumper which I highly suggest you read. You can't get much bigger than the Dawn is your enemy so that's why I am ending the video here. Until next time, I'm Group Pickles saying don't use Sony Movie Studio Platinum to make videos ever again, because then your desktop will be full of stupid SSFK files.